What is up, guys? This is Chris with Leveling Up Your Finances. And if you remember last week, we went over uh, the Ethereum 2.0, what is it? And uh, understanding the merge and the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. We broke down proof of stake. So this time we're going to break down proof of work. What is proof of work? Proof of work is the blockchain based algorithm that secures many cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Well, that was a good video, guys. I'll see you next week. I'm just kidding. That's my my lame dad jokes. Uh, proof of work is an algorithm that secures many cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Most digital currencies have a central entity or a leader keeping track of every user and how much money they have. But there's no such leader in charge of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Proof of work is needed to make the online currency work without a company or governing or government running the show. Sorry, I have the hiccups out of nowhere. That was weird. Basically, proof of work solves the double spending problem, which is a little bit trickier to solve without a leader in charge. But that's what we don't want. That's why we're decentralized. If users can double spend their coin, this inflates the overall supply, debasing everyone else's coin and making currency unpredictable and worthless. So double spending is an issue with online tra transactions because digital actions are very easy to replicate, which is what makes it trivial to copy and paste a file or send an email to more than one person. So do you understand that for the beginners out there or anyone that just didn't get it, I guess? Um, basically, you know, on, let's say like a Word document, you can copy a sentence, paste it as many times as you want, or say you have a dollar. Now I'm going to copy and paste that dollar a hundred times. Now I have a hundred dollars. That's the issue because now I can go spend that hundred dollars. Make sense? That's what we don't want to happen. Otherwise, it's basically it's money that's worthless or currency that's worthless. It's almost like when the Fed just prints the U.S. dollar bill. Hmm. Proof of work makes doubling digital money very, very hard. It's uh, much like it sounds. It's proof that someone has done a significant amount of compu uh, computations. All right, so here's how it actually breaks down. How proof of work works. Bitcoin is a blockchain, which is a shared ledger that contains a history of every Bitcoin transaction that ever took place. This blockchain, as the name suggests, is composed of blocks. Weird. It's crazy. But even when I first started getting into the blockchain, I had no idea what that meant. So that's basically it. Each block has the most recent transaction stored on it. Yeah, I know. It's it's almost like common sense and you feel stupid once you actually read it, but you're not. Everybody is confused at first, so don't worry about it. I'm still confused day to day on pretty much anything. So proof of work is necessary part of uh, adding new blocks to the uh, Bitcoin blockchain or Ethereum or whatever. Blocks are summed to life by miners, the players in the ecosystem which execute proof of work. So you've heard of people Bitcoin mining. This is how it breaks down. A new block is accepted by the network each time a miner comes up with new winning proof of work, which happens roughly every 10 minutes. And again, remember how people talk about Bitcoin's kind of slow? It takes 10 minutes for it to work, like, you know, to, for the transaction to go through. That's why we're looking at things like Cardano, which is much faster. There's other ones out there, but whatever. I just like Cardano, so that's why I'm only, I'm dropping it. Plus, I own Cardano. So, like, if you guys want to go buy some just kidding don't take that out you, you guys do whatever you want i just have it so i'm just letting you know all right miners will earn bitcoin if they guess a matching uh, computation 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 that's such a weird word the more computations they churn out the more bitcoin they are likely to earn what computations are the miners making exactly in bitcoin miners spit out a so-called hash which turns an input into a random looking string of letters and numbers. So you might've heard of that, the hash, right? The goal of the miners is to create a hash matching Bitcoin's current target. They must create a hash with enough zeros in front. The probability of getting several zeros in a row is very low. Miners across the world are making trillions of such computations a second. So it takes them about 10 minutes on average to hit this target. Whoever reaches the goal first wins a batch of Bitcoin currency. Then the Bitcoin protocol creates a new value that the miners must hash and miners start the race of finding the winning proof of work all over again. Clear as mud, guys. You got it. Do you understand what's going on now? Okay, because I still don't have a clue what they're saying, but that's basically the proof of work and how it breaks down. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's kind of like the simplest, simplest way put. Um, 
we can jump into some of these uh, frequently asked questions. There's a lot of good ones in here. So again, we're just going to keep going. But if you want to stop there, stop there. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Why do miners follow the rules? Oh, that makes sense. Why would they follow the rules? They could just cheat, right? Miners earn Bitcoin rewards for every block for which they find the solution. This is what drives them to mine in the first place. This monetary reward also drives them to follow the rules. Not double spending their money, for instance. Say Alfred the miner wants a winning hash for a block. If Alfred submits the solution with the block but breaks the rules within the block, say, spends coins more than once, the rest of the Bitcoin network will reject Alfred's block. Alfred will lose all Bitcoin he could have or should have won. The threat of losing the Bitcoin rewards keeps miners honest. So does that make sense? When money's involved, people send, tend to you know, follow the rules, especially if they're going to get a reward for it. Okay. Why is proof of work needed? The goal of proof of work is to prevent users from printing extra coins. Like we said, they can't copy and paste, copy and paste. They didn't earn or spending or double spending. If users were able to spend their coins more than once, it would effectively make the currency worthless. In most digital currencies, this, is, this problem is easy to solve. The bank that is in charge of the system keeps track of how much money each person has. If Alice sends Bob one dollar, then the bank deducts one dollar from Alice and gives it one dollar to Bob. Easy. Awesome. But in cryptocurrency, there is no such entity. Proof of work provides a solution. Sweet. Who invented proof of work? All right. So this is the debatable, but Bitcoin creator Satoshi uh, Nakamoto invented proof of work. We don't know who really did, if that's his real name or not. Nobody knows uh, to get Bitcoin off the ground. Okay. No one knows who uh, Nakamoto is or whether this name is an alias. See, I just said that. Anyways, back to the, the thing. What are the problems with proof of work? This is actually makes a lot of sense because it uses a lot of high uh, energy use. That's why a lot of people are kind of moving to proof of stake because it uses less energy and it's more efficient. However, sometimes you got to spend money to be secure, guys. So that makes sense, right? I don't know. Yeah. Bitcoin uses as much energy as all of Switzerland. Okay, because of proof of work and its energy use is increasing as much more miners join the hunt for Bitcoin, though some of this is powered by renewable energy. Again, it uses a lot, a lot of energy. So that's why a lot of people don't like Bitcoin because of that. But because it's using all that energy, it's a lot more secure because of proof of work. It's almost like a two edged sword there. The 51% attacks. So this is almost impossible. But anyways, we might as well share it. If one miner entity is able to accumulate 51% of Bitcoin mining hash rate, it can then float the rules temporarily, double spending coins, and blocking transaction. Again, that's almost impossible to do. That's a lot of Bitcoin you got to have to do that. Mining centralization. Proof of work is all about creating currency without one single entity in charge. Yep, decentralization. Weird. That's why we like it. Why does more mining power mean more security? The more computational power being poured into securing Bitcoin, the more resources a potential attacker needs to amass in order to successfully, successfully attack Bitcoin. That's what I just said like two minutes ago. That's why it's actually in, like, yeah, it's using a lot of power, but it just means it's that much more secure. Which kip, uh, cryptocurrencies use proof of work? Here's just a list. Bitcoin, obviously, Ethereum, but now Ethereum is trying to cross over to proof of stake only. And that's why we're doing the merge on Ethereum 2.0. So we'll see. It's supposed to, again, happen in August. We'll see if it does. Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin. I mean, does anyone use Litecoin anymore? I know I'm holding a bag and nobody keeps investing in it because I'm trying to sell that crap. And then Monero. I don't even think anyone uses Monero anymore. I haven't heard anything about Monero in like a year. Oh, and that was basically it, guys. So that's the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. Proof of stake, again, is when you have uh, your more skin in the game. It depends on how much you actually hold and stake down. Reverse proof of work, use a lot more electricity, blah, blah, blah. Clear as mud. Now I'm more confused. I'm just kidding. All right, guys. So at the end of the day, remember to stay awesome and keep loving each other. Like I love steak, but like beef steak.